Hi, everyone. This is James Patrick from the Form Celebrity Podcast, and I'm here with my wonderful, lovely co-host. How are you, Florence Carmella? I'm doing great, James. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Let's get right into it. Everyone's been saying the same thing, even some people in the media, that Alec Baldwin is the executive producer of this film, Russ, so he is in charge and he is liable. The answer to that is false. He's not an executive producer. Alec Baldwin is actually one of the producers, and he's not even making any money off this film. We're going to give you links to some of the other people that are involved, the investors. So this is something that people are just kind of assuming, and we never assume here. We always want to check it out. That's something the media is not concentrating on. I am glad that the LA Times is actually starting to ask questions and do things. They've done a great job in this because that's the question. And every lawyer in the country is saying this is why this is a train wreck because indie films don't have a chain of command. With bigger films and blockbuster films, the executive producer, the producer, pretty much known who has what, who owns what, who's in charge of what. But for indie productions, it's all a mess because some people just finance it and want executive producer. Some people People just are producers. They just want a tag. Some people just give money so they could have it in their IMDb or in their profile. That's why this is going to be such a mess. Everyone already is trying to leave jump ship. Now, the statement I was trying to use that is often said that success in Hollywood has many fathers, but failure is an orphan. Well, already two of the rest EPs are wiping their hands clean of this situation. Let's clear up who really is in charge on the movie Rust. Executive producer Alan Cheney made it note in a statement provided to the press that he, along with Emily Salveson and her streamlined global finance company, received executive producer credit on the film Rust, having no involvement with the fiscal day-to-day operation. This is consistent with financing partners across productions of all sizes. Now, what I found out from people that work on set is that in indie productions, especially in the last three years or so, have made it almost impossible to figure out who really is in charge. For major motion pictures, it's very strict and to the point who is in charge of what. But in indie films, it's the opposite. Some just get the name of producer because given money or they want a title or an actor that gets less money, so he wants the title producer. We're going to have a link to all the producers and executive producers attached to this movie. Now let's get back to Alec Baldwin. As far as he goes, he is one of the producers, but he does not get any profits from this movie. As we said, sometimes actors will also give away the titles for financial backing of a movie. There are five other producers on this film, along with Baldwin. This is why most lawyers think this is going to be an absolute nightmare trying to find out who is liable and who isn't. So to the question we had and many of you had is who is in charge? And so far, everyone is saying the same thing. No one knows. It's different for each indie film, and it's not exactly defined. Remember that Russ was an unbonded film as well. They had no completion bond. And as we stated in previous pods, a completion bond is a balloon insurance or, in layman's terms, a super insurance. Many crew have said the sets have become lax, especially in thinking they don't need to be bonded. Already, Florence, I'm seeing more and more in Hollywood stating they no longer will use guns on sets. What have you heard? Yes. Dwayne The Rock Johnson has already announced that he will no longer be using real guns for any of his productions, for his production company, as well as some of the TV shows that are out now. Changes are already taking place. The show The Rookies will no longer be using real guns on the set. So definitely this Alec Baldwin tragedy, the situation already made changes in Hollywood. Thank you so much. And boy, especially Dwayne Johnson, who I'm still trying to find a major film he's not in. Now to go back with what Florence and I was saying, we also heard from attorney Jeff Harris. He's famous for representing the family of Sarah Jones and John Berniker. Sarah was a camera assistant that was killed in the 2014 accident on the set of an indie film called Midnight Rider. John Berniker was a stuntman who died on the production of The Walking Dead, and Jeff was able to get the family $8.6 million in a settlement after his death on set. When asked about the Rust set, he said there's little question that the Rust tragedy will yield litigation, possibly for years to come. But the question of final liability can be really tricky. Harris said because producers and executive producers who merely invested in the movie 
will not want to be culpable unless it can be demonstrated that some action on their part led to the problems on the set. Now, the scary thing about being one of these people is that Russ is going to be investigated by OSHA, the Santa Fe Police Department, as well as the insurance company. Many lawyers online and in TV interviews have stated they do not believe Alec Baldwin will be charged with any crime. His liability will be in the civil trials. Some lawyers do say that they feel David Halls and Hannah Reed may be charged. Conviction in these situations with a Hollywood production isn't the easiest. There's been several cases where the outcome was not very good for the people that sued a movie production. The worst probably was the Twilight Zone situation where John Landis was facing three years in prison. Somehow, some way, he and the rest of the set got off. Some lawyers are saying there's going to be a deep pocket situation where the ones with the most money will probably get the most litigation. We also found out over the weekend that after the second gun discharge, another person in the crew texted to a producer how dangerous they felt the set was. To show just how crazy things have gotten in Hollywood, in 2010, there were 210 tape productions going on. In 2021, there are 512, and there will be a great increase next year. That makes it dangerous because there's so many tapings, but not enough workers to go around. Many are inexperienced and really aren't ready to be on a set in a management position. Less talented people with less experience. Someone did die. So criminal charges could be pending. We don't know. It could also be civil lawsuits. The story is far from over. This is a fascinating case. There's going to be a lot of people pointing fingers, especially lawyers. So we'll keep you abreast at all this going on. A couple other things I wanted to add is that defendants in a civil lawsuit would likely argue the shooting was a workplace accident, meaning that the victims could only seek payment through workers' compensation insurance. However, University of New Mexico School of Law professor Sonia Gibson Rankin said the victims could seek to prove that defendants had ignored safety concerns in the past and were knowingly acting in a dangerous way. If successful, the victims might be able to seek damages in court, which would be much higher than with workers' compensation. A couple of you also asked about the rumor that t-shirts were made by the production staff, and yes, it is true. When people complained about driving an hour to work and home an hour after a long day of being on the set, the production team asked, actually mocked them by doing t-shirts. They were long black t-shirts that said, one of them said, Air 404, housing not found, and, and the other one said, ABQ is an hour away. So it's obvious a lot of the things that they talked about. Uh, the rest production staff was not having it. Thank you so much for your support and your kind words. Please make sure you check us out on Twitter. And if you need a shout out, let us know or retweet. Let's help each other. Take care and have a great day.